Brilliant. Hello, my name is Samane Kavei, and I am the counsel for this session. Hello, my name is Mushtaba Nazarinia. I'm the co-counsel in this hearing session. Hello, my name is Fariha Siddiqui, and I will act as the client, Maria Lopez. Hi, Maria. I am going to ask you some questions uh, about your case. Um, what is your country of nationality? El Salvador. Are you a citizen or permanent resident of any other country? No, I'm not. Um, tell me a summary of your background and history. I'm a citizen of El Salvador. Um, my husband and I, uh, we've fallen apart. Um, my husband has been abusive towards me since 2014. And um, during that time, actually a few years after that, I started to develop a relationship with his cousin, Miguel. I got pregnant and uh, Carlos's abuse just hasn't stopped. And since then, since I learned that I was pregnant with someone else's child, I was worried that um, it was going to get worse, the abuse. So because I had a multiple entry visa, I decided to come to Canada um, in October of uh, 2018. But I have left two children behind in El Salvador. How old are your children? I have a 19-year-old son and a 12-year-old daughter. Um, have you lived or been to any other country other than Canada and El Salvador? Um, my husband used to work in Uruguay. So we did travel to see him a few times. Okay. Um, what was your husband's immigration status in your grade? Uh, he is a worker. Okay. Um, when did you enter Canada? October 2018 in Toronto. Okay. And what was your status when you entered Canada? A uh, visitor. Uh, did you have any family members in Canada or do you have any? No, I do not. Why are you afraid to go back to El Salvador? Uh, my husband mistreats me. He physically abuses me and he's now threatened to kill me. Oh. Um, where are your children now or and who is taking care of them? Um, both my children are in El Salvador with my sister. Do you have any uh, family members back home uh, that you will be sponsoring later on if you stay in Canada? Uh, just my children. Just your children. Um, and the issue with, between you and your husband, when did this started, start and how did it start? So my husband... Um worked outside of El Salvador. He worked in Uruguay and I stopped seeing him as often as I used to because of his work. And then our rela relationship started to become a little stressed and it just got really, really hectic around 2014 and 15 when the abuse began. I'll pass it on to my co-counsel from here. Um, hi, Maria. Uh, did you have plans to apply for refugee protection in Canada? Uh, before you enter to the uh, country? No, I didn't have plans to apply for any type of refugee protection. Um, I wanted to give birth to my child in Canada because I wanted a safe place to give birth and I felt uh, I, I was fearful of my husband. Um, then the hospital accidentally sent the documents to my address in El Salvador. And that's when my husband realized that I was pregnant and had given birth to a new baby which was mm -hmm. not his. It was his cousin Miguel's. And after that, he started threatening me and my sister. Um, and he said that he will kill me and cut my legs off if I return to El Salvador. Why did the hospital send the paperwork to your home address in El Salvador? Uh, so the last time that I was in Canada, I got sick and I was admitted to the hospital. At that time, I had registered my address um, in uh, El Salvador as my primary residence. So it looks like this time they didn't update or ask me anything about my address. And because of that, they had that address on file and they've sent all the records now on that address. What has your husband done and why are you afraid to make yourself available to him? My husband has been abusive uh, towards me since 2015. And uh, he's now that he's realized that I have a baby from another man. 
he has threatened to kill me and my baby. So I, I'm, I'm terrified of him. How was the relationship formed between you and Miguel? Uh, he started to support me when um, things got really abusive and I drifted away from Carlos. Uh, he started to come over and he was financially supporting me and I developed feelings for him. How did the Carlos abusive behavior develop in the El Salvador? He used to bring girls over to our home. And recently he asked me to leave as he wanted to live with his new girlfriend. He also hit and physically abused me, uh, you know, since 2015, multiple times, even to the point where I had to reach out to the church to get help. Uh, was he abusive in regards to other family members like your children as well? Yes, um, my son, he was just really tired of the toxic environment. And one time he tried to hide from Carlos because he was so scared. And Carlos found him and then he abused him too and mistreated him badly. If we need your son as a witness, will you be able to arrange that? Yes, I would, uh, I would like to do that. Um, I will have to ask him if he's comfortable being a witness, but I can try and arrange that. And did you ask any help from the police or other authorities in uh, El Salvador? No, the police in El Salvador doesn't help with domestic abuse. Um, my son did try to approach the police once, but they didn't help us. Uh, we went to our church and asked the priest for help as well. But when Carlos found out, he kicked everybody out of the house. Did you try to move to another part of the country? No, there really is no safe place. You know, El Salvador is a very small country and um, Carlos has relations with gangs and police. And because of his connections, he can find me anywhere in El Salvador. How have you supported yourself in Canada? How did you survive? I had some savings with me. And then uh, my son in El Salvador, he was transferring some money to me as well. Um, the local church in Toronto, I was able to reach out to them and they were supporting me financially as well. And then my friend Karina, she told me that if I applied for a refugee status, then I would be granted a work permit. So that everything, that's everything that I've been relying on. And later on, uh, what's your plan for your children? in case of your uh, your su successfully staying here? Um, I really hope that I can stay here because I have nowhere else to go. It's not safe for me to go back to El Salvador. And if I am able to stay here, I will definitely want to bring my children so that they can be reunited with me here and we can just live our life safely here. Yeah, thank you so much. It's the end of questions here, and uh, we're going to switch the role play. And, um, you know, the Faria is going to switch his uh, role to the um, uh, council and put the submission. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Fariha Siddiqui, and I will now um, begin my submissions. Madam Member, uh, my client, a national of El Salvador, fits the definition of a refugee under the nexus, a member of a social group, specifically abused women. She is the victim of domestic abuse and has been subjected to physical abuse and threats from her husband, Carlos Lopez. Since her arrival in Canada, Carlos has threatened to kill Maria and her newly born Canadian child, Rosa, at his earliest opportunity. We saw from the text messages and based on my client's testimony, how her husband Carlos has verbally, physically, and emotionally abused her and her children. And this began in 2014. Her well-founded fear of persecution got worse when she got pregnant with her child, uh, with Miguel, who is her husband's cousin. We saw in his WhatsApp messages uh, to Maria how he threatened to kill her and her baby. The best interest of a Canadian born child is to be protected from harm, from any abuse, and Maria and her children deserve protection from Canada. Based on the national documentation package of El Salvador, um, El Salvador has a very poor reputation when it comes to women's protection. The government and its police 
have not been very effective in protecting the human rights of women. According to the National Documentation Package of El Salvador, the response to information request of September 17, 2015, tab one, situations and statistics, states that the domestic violence in El Salvador is a serious and widespread problem. The UN reporter notes in her report that according to studies, domestic violence and sexual abuse of women in El Salvador in the private sphere largely remain invisible and are underreported. Further, there are strong discriminatory biases against women that remain pervasive among judicial officials, police, prosecutors, and other actors of law enforcement. So women are rarely trying to reach out for help towards the police. There's also a report in 2017 on a Salvadorian newspaper, Vervista Factum, that there is evidence of a death squad in the elite unit of the Salvadorian police that engages in femicide, which is defined by Salvadorian law as killing, motivated by hatred or contempt for women. Having these kinds of reports proves that you can't rely on Salvadorian government and its police force since some of their members are engaged in unlawful and inhumane acts. Also, Madam Member, El Salvador is a very small country. Based on the affidavits that were submitted as part of disclosure, Carlos can easily track and find Maria in any corner of El Salvador. Proof of that is when he easily tracked her son Gustavo when he went to work in a different town because he could not bear the toxic environment of his father abusing his mother. We have evidence to corroborate the psychological and emotional damage caused to him by his father through the school counselor's report. Therefore, there is no viable internal flight alternative for Maria Lopez. We also want to reiterate that the reason why Maria did not file for a protection claim upon arrival in Canada is that she intended to go back to El Salvador after giving birth. She has left behind two children, a 19-year-old and a 12-year-old. However, due to some errors at the hospital, the documents regarding the birth of her new baby, Rosa, were sent to their home in El Salvador, and Carlos got a hold of them. Consequently, Carlos found out about the child and that it wasn't his baby, but his cousins, which made the matter even worse. He has then sent a death threat to Maria and her child. Madam Member, we request that you give Maria and her children uh, the protection they need and be granted refugee status. We believe that the evidence in hand is very strong and that there is no credibility issue and they generally deserve Canadian protection. That is all I have, Madam Member. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is the end of our session.